Good Friday morning, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with your Friday morning early edition of our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. If you've never tuned in here before, first of all, welcome to the show and thanks for stopping by. We'll answer any questions. Well, we'll try to get most of the questions anyway that you might have about your forecast into the rest of the weekend. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, we're on here for occasionally 5, 10, 15 minutes talking a lot about things that we don't have the time to talk about on air. So if you've got anything in the way, of weather questions. We'll be answering those coming up here in just a little bit. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, forecast information in the red bar at the bottom of your screen scrolling on by there. And if you can't stick around for that and want to check out more, this is the place you want to be, wreg.com slash weather for more information about our 7 to 10 day forecast. And if you have any questions or anything in the way of concerns or any suggestions that you might want to see on here when it comes to weather information or anything else, please let me know. Drop me a line again at austin.onic at WREG.com. We'll be glad to give your suggestions on there. Whatever we can get do to get you coming back here to watch again for the, your exclusive video weather blog for early Friday morning. We'll be glad to see what you got out there. Coming up in just a bit, we'll take a look at the tropics. We'll also take a look and see about wildfire danger in the Mid-South area. And if you've ever been asking the question about those myths about weather, especially that involves the idea that the number of fogs in August determine the number of winter snow. We'll take a look at that coming up here in just a little bit. Drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section. Let's see who's checking in from where out there. And we'll also see again a little bit more about this. Give us some temperatures wind speeds and directions, cloud cover. If you got any rain the last couple of days, let us know about that. But again, drop those into the comments section. We'll read off some of the weather reports as they come in from across the area. 50 days and change until the change in seasons. The autumn equinox happens Saturday, September 22nd. So we got a little ways to go. So if you love summer, you got over a month to go on this. And if you're looking forward to autumn, you've got at least a little bit of time before that happens there. It could always be worse on the temperatures. Very close to 90 degrees yesterday. Mid to upper 80s for high temperatures in the Memphis area. High temperature for the country. Once again, Death Valley setting in with 121 degrees, which coincidentally is cooler than what they saw last week with a high back into late July of 127 degrees. That was set for nearly a week straight in the Death Valley area, so a little bit better in some parts of the United States anyway. Rest of the day today, again, temperatures coming very close to August normals, just a bit below that, I think, into the lower to mid-90s for areas south of I-40. <clears throat> Excuse me, right at the lower 90s as we head into the course of the rest of the day for today. And again, this is going to be about where we wind up for on temperatures into the rest of the weekend. So if you have plans for outdoors, I think you can go ahead and keep them. But keep in mind that there may be some more thunderstorms coming on through as we get into around the rest of the area toward Sunday afternoon and evening. So keep an eye on that for right now. Charles Edward Stanton, hot in North Carolina. I believe that. I was hoping uh, North Carolina would be getting some more rain and thunderstorms over in that area. We'll take a look at some of the National Park webcams here in a little bit. Mid to East Memphis, Tennessee, 70 degrees and humid. Margaret C. Zavodny, hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Clear skies from Matthew Brown. Thank you very much for that weather report out there, and welcome to everybody else who's checking in for this morning. Warm temperatures over the next few days. Again, numbers going to be heading upwards into the lower to mid-90s throughout the rest of the day today, and then briefly cooling down into very early tomorrow morning as we get some temperatures going back to around the lower to mid-70s, and that's about as cool as it gets for the metro area, so not seeing a great deal of anything involving nicer, cooler weather from out of Canada, and that's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the weekend. Back into the area around Purchase Knob, a little bit of light drizzle and some fog in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park as some rain moves up off the Gulf of Mexico. So not too much sunshine showing up over western North Carolina and into around portions of eastern Tennessee. The opposite side of the continent, looking back toward Half Dome out there in the distance, fog mainly, but also smoke from the Ferguson fire blanketing the area of Yosemite National Park. We'll take a look at wildfire danger here in the Mid-South. Updates on the wildfires out west. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 and CBS News will keep you updated on that. Closer to home, the quad in and around areas of Ole Miss in Oxford, Mississippi. Beautiful morning on the campus. Tons of sunshine there, so very much on the pleasant side. 
Bob Baird, Stantonville, beautiful this morning. Thank you very much for uh, that weather report. And thanks to everybody else, again, for checking in uh, into and around the area. If you're just tuning in, again, drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section. would love to see more about what it looks like there. Moderate traffic, again, not too heavy, not too light around I-55 and Goodman Road as we approach the peak of rush hour for Friday morning. Decently quiet for now. Remember, it's going to get a lot busier around here as we go into Monday as we see school starting for a lot of places in the Mid-South this coming Monday. A lot more over the next couple of weeks as more schools get into gear. Traffic heavy but moving pretty well around I-240 around the Poplar Avenue exit. Tons of sunshine this morning. Beautiful conditions out there so not seeing a problem there. Likewise on Storm Tracker 3S radar clean sweeps across the entire Mid-South area, and we're not really seeing anything in the way of rain anytime soon. Sunday, that could be a bit of a different story. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. There's the showers we're talking about from the Florida Gulf Coast all the way up into New England, moving away from us. East Tennessee, as we saw in the Purchase Knob National Park System's webcam, few light showers showing up over western North Carolina, down into around eastern Georgia, and all the way up into the eastern Great Lakes. Shower is going to be continuing off and on. Okay. Excuse me, just one second. I guess that's it for the radar right now. Apparently the system has other ideas, so we're getting need to pour some more coffee into the grounds of the computer system at some point, and hopefully the engineers didn't hear me say that. As of right now, temperature is about it, cranky computers. It happens. It's live netcasting. That's what goes on sometimes. Mid to upper 70s on live real-time WeatherNet 3. These are the warmest numbers just past 8 o'clock this morning. And again, should be heading closer to the 90s in the next couple of hours. If you want to check out this information on your computer system, go to this website and click on the weather bug icon in the menu section at the top of the weather screen. You'll find out more information there. Rest of the day today, again, temperatures through about late this morning, past live at 9 into the lower to mid 90s, heading into around the mid to upper 80s to lower 90s through later on this afternoon. Now, the computer, again, anytime the moisture content of the atmosphere drops significantly and there's any possibility of some possible clouds out there, clusters of cumulus popping up, things like that, the computer does a pretty good job of popping in these little areas of showers and thunderstorms. I don't see anything happening. According to many of the other computer models, nothing is going to be going on, but this particular model is a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more over-eager, so it pops in those chances of showers and thunderstorms, but I really don't see a need for the umbrella for today, unless you want to take that along as like a portable sunshade, just to be on the safe side there. Rest of the day today and into this afternoon, temperatures topping off into the mid to upper 80s to lower 90s. That's right about normal for this time of the year. Through News Channel 3 at 10 in the mid to upper 80s, and by daybreak tomorrow morning, should be again into the mid to upper 60s. That'll be the exception. The rule will be the lower 70s, and those winds turning up from out of the southeast are going to bring a lot more moisture from off the Gulf and the Atlantic, and that's going to raise our humidity values, and that's going to make things a little bit more uncomfortable around here as we go into the rest of the weekend. So air temperatures for today, lower 90s. Likewise, into tomorrow, seeing temperatures back in the lower 90s, almost exactly where we should be for this time of the year, so not too hot, definitely nowhere near cool. And temperatures into Sunday, back in the lower 90s. Now, again, I think all of Saturday looks good. Most of Sunday up until about lunchtime looks okay for outdoor activities, but the farther you go past midday on Sunday, that's where we're going to see the best possibility of showers and thunderstorms redeveloping. And right on into the first week of school, especially in the afternoons, I think there may be some mad dashes from the school building to the waiting car rider line or the bus rider line as kids get back to school and the teachers dismiss them. So there could be some minor showers out there, including some thunderstorms mixed in with that as we head throughout the course of the rest of the week. Best chance of showers and thunderstorms Wednesday and Thursday, about a 50% chance both days. And those clouds should do a good job of blocking out more sunshine. So we should see some temperatures kind of a little bit more palatable out there, but it is still going to be very humid over the next few days. Now, National Weather Service is showing more humidity around Monday. Temperatures in the lower 90s, that's just the air temperature. Combine that with the humidity to get that feels-like index, and we could easily have 
temperatures on the heat index scale around or over 105 degrees, and that is very close to heat advisory territory. 105 degrees plus is where those advisories start getting issued out there. Sandra Tenner, Mississippi, getting through the heat, May through July. Have a blessed day. Thank you very much uh, for that one, and everybody else checking in for this morning as well. Taking a look at wildfire danger, again, a lot of stories coming in from out west of some devastation with some of those massive wildfires taking place. We, again, at this time of the year, have our greatest wildfire threat before we head into the winter season. About a week and a half ago, Lee County in Arkansas was under a burn ban. That's not the case at this point in time, and only four counties in Arkansas are still under burn bans right now. Nevada, Washtaw, Columbia, and Lafayette into and around the area, or Lafayette down into southwestern parts of Arkansas. Mississippi does not have any burn bans in effect, and again, Tennessee does not issue burn bans on a county-by-county -county basis unless it's under great need, a large drought or a large wildfire risk out there. So right about now, there's nothing showing up in the way of a huge wildfire threat for the Mid-South. So good news on that. Going to the opposite side of the scale, from burning to anything involving flooding and storms, Again, this is the biggest area of development for tropical storms at this time of the year. Gulf, Caribbean, Western Atlantic, nothing developing at this time. And right into the weekend and early next week, the National Hurricane Center is not showing any development at this point in time, so definitely good news there. We'll keep track of that throughout the rest of hurricane season. We're about a month away from the peak of the season. Happens in about early to mid-September. We'll keep our eyes on this, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more on that. Okay, the big question that has been raised by numerous weather almanacs out there. Pick up a weather almanac and you'll probably see something like this out there that says the number of fogs that you get in August will determine the numbers of snows that you get in the season of winter. Well, we've been keeping track of this for about the last seven to eight years. This is all information from the National Weather Service. We've got this off their climate data page. You can get the same information out there. Do the same tallies yourself if you want to. Numbers of fogs in August here, numbers of snowfall recorded over here, and the correlation, again, between the two just does not add up. So we're just not seeing much of anything out there that justifies that myth as being anywhere close to true. So if you, again, you'd like to see more about this, check out my social media pages, and we'll post more about this throughout the course of the next few weeks, especially as we get more of those fogs coming up throughout August, and we'll tally that through winter and see how many snows we wind up as well. Check out my forecast, available with Bob and Josh on TalkBack Live this morning. Again, started at 8 o'clock. They'll be on the air until 10 on AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio in Memphis. Can't hear them because you're outside the, the listening area. Dial them up online at TalkBackLiveNetwork.org. A lot to talk about into the area Again, with sports coming up and uh, high school and college football season pretty soon. And they'll talk about just about anything on there from, from golf to bowling to just about anything. So a great place to discuss sports in the Mid-South area. Dial them up. Great place to listen in for more information on that. Coming up later on this morning, we'll have more on that fog versus winter snows on News Channel 3 Live at 9, and I'll have more coming up on News Channel 3 at noon. Tim and Jim will have more on First at 4 through News Channel 3 at 10 later on tonight. And, of course, stay tuned for my forecast throughout Saturday and Sunday here on News Channel 3. Got any questions, suggestions, anything like that? Again, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. We'll be glad to have you along for the ride. If there's anything you'd like to see on here, please let me know. If you've got weather pictures, again, please drop them to, again, my social media pages or email them to me at the same address, so we'd love to feature them on here. Coming up on our late edition of Weather Overtime at about 10.45 this morning, we'll take a look and see if you've sent in any more weather pictures, and we'll be featuring those coming up in the course of the next couple of hours, so stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 on air and online. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the morning for more weather, news, sports, and all kinds of information across the Mid-South.